Hey folks, uh, welcome back. So I got this in the mail a few days ago. This is a kit I ordered from uh, Retro Game Repair Shop. Uh, for those that don't know, I have been working with them for a few other things, but um, I did order this kit out of my own money. This isn't sponsored or anything like that. This is just me being a Game Boy nor nerd ordering stuff and uh, building it, I guess. Uh, so this is how it came. I did start opening it already because I wasn't 100% sure what was in the box and you know, I didn't want, didn't really want any sur uh, surprises, but here's how it comes packed here. This is as far as I got when I was opening it. All right, so there's another card. I'll add that to my collection there. So here's what I got. This is another backlight kit for the Game Boy Pocket. Uh, I did just do one of these, I don't know, a few weeks ago, very recently. Uh, the difference is the kit I did a few weeks ago was the, uh, I, don't, I don't really know what to call these things. I've just been kind of making it up as I go. But this is the, or the one that I did was the high vision kit, which uses that um, 60 FPS low power, uh, photo frame I see, which, while it works nicely, it does result in some screen tearing. This one, on the other hand, is uses a different chip here. Uh, unfortunately, it's not labeled, so I couldn't tell you what it is if I wanted to, but it doesn't really matter too much because even if I told you, it wouldn't really mean anything to me. Uh, but what this is, this is a... Um, it's not really a clone. I think calling it a clone is disingenuous because it's using completely different electronics and it has completely different features. The only thing that is copied is apparently this ribbon cable, which, yeah, that's kind of kind of dishonest. But, I mean, the, the rest of the kit is entirely new and, you know, it's, it's an original design and it even adds features that the original doesn't have. So... Yeah, it is sort of a copy, but it's also sort of not. Uh, but anyway, I got this kit because this is the only one, the only version that I didn't have of this style backlight. And I wanted to get it installed and see how it would compare to the other kits. Uh, but this is what it all comes with. You get this thick foam piece, custom lens, the screen itself, and then the adapter. Uh, so the install pretty much the same as every other version of this kit. I'm going to go ahead and get it installed in this Game Boy Pocket here. Uh, I actually got this pretty recently. Uh, it was a super, super awesome gift during the holiday exchange. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a battery cover, but that's easy enough to fix. I just, you know, postage being what it is, it hasn't arrived yet. But I'm working on it. So to install this kit, unfortunately it does require a little bit of soldering, unlike the Game Boy Color counterpart, but it's still still super easy to install. Uh, but you do gotta pull your Game Boy Pocket apart. Thankfully there is no shell modification necessary. So while it is a little bit more involved as far as installing this kit goes, it's still uh, at least more involved in the Game Boy Color version, it's still super easy. And, you know, as long as you don't totally blunder the soldering, it is completely reversible too. So if you have like a limited edition ice blue or something, feel free to backlight it without worrying too much. Oh, I forgot about that. I have to fix that at some point. The, uh, bat the, the battery terminal is just completely corroded off. I was ignoring that because the battery was holding that screw on, but yeah, I'll fix that later. Anyway, six tri-point screws on the outside, and then once you've got the outside off, you've got three JIS screws on the inside. Note these are not Phillips. You can use the appropriate sized Phillips driver to remove them, but you have to be really careful because... Uh, Pretty easy to strip them out with the Phillips. All right. Now we 
we just gotta pop this ribbon cable connector up and it should there it goes pop on out and we can lift this PCB out of here while you have your console apart I suppose it would be wise to take this opportunity to clean it and um, were I a wise man I would probably do that but I'm not going to today so to get this screen out uh, the easiest method I've found just go ahead and give the shell a little bit of a twist and uh, one of the corners will pop up and then you can pry up the screen from there just, there's adhesive on all four sides all right. so I'm gonna go ahead and save this uh, I'm actually gonna put it in another pocket I have here uh, this one and then I'll take this screen and uh, I'll fix that at some point and try and backlight it and we'll go from there that but that's another video this screen though I, I'm just gonna keep stock leave it as is put in a Game Boy and we'll call it a day so I'm gonna go ahead and set that oh wait no I can't set it aside yet I still need it for testing um, but before I get completely distracted this adhesive go ahead and leave it in there or at least I'm going to go ahead and leave it in here because it's going to help hold down this screen when I get to that. But that's a few steps ahead at this point. I am going to go ahead and reattach this screen because I'm a sucker for data. But if you're just backlighting your console, there's zero reason you have to do this. So this is actually a different revision PCB than I've ever had the pleasure of doing for a uh, Game Boy Pocket. It's an MGB LCPU01, but what's what I noticed is interesting about it is it doesn't have a silk screen over these buttons, probably because this is a clear console. I don't know if that's custom for this shell, but I thought it was pretty cool. Anyway, last time I did this I tested with a Tetris cartridge, but I got rid of my Japanese version so all I have left is my US version but it's okay it's literally the same game I just want to get a baseline for how power efficient Game Boy Pocket is before we modify it and then we can get some numbers afterwards and see you know extrapolate what kind of battery usage we can expect from this mod So at 2.4 volts, on the title screen of Tetris, this thing is pulling just under 100 milliamps. Which, I don't know, that's pretty much what every Game Boy does at this voltage anyway. Let's also try... Is it in that Game Boy? Yeah, it is. I'm going to try Pokemon Silver, because ultimately I'm going to be testing with this cartridge. So, two data points won't hurt. So in the overworld of Pokemon Silver, you can see the Game Boy's pulling a little bit more, jumping up to as high as 110 and as low as 105, but good enough. And that will make more sense once I get the kit installed. Because one of the supposed features of this uh, new version of the kit is that this one doesn't drop frames unlike the high vision version. Let's get this garbage out of here. I'll set it in the bag I had the other screen in. Right. So before we actually get to installing, you're probably going to want to use the uh, custom LCD that they send you because the screen is smaller and so this custom LCD or lens has a bigger bezel. 
easiest way to get this bez or lens out is just pop it out from the inside. And I recommend doing that before you get everything assembled. This is going to make your life easier. Okay. And from here, we're good to go to start assembling the mod. I'm going to turn on my soldering iron because I will need it shortly. But this goes in here. You just have to line the top of the LCD up with the uh, top of the shell. Set that in there. But the reason I, I ordered this kit practically a month ago. The reason I put this off so long is because I wanted to order these and test these out. What these are, these are the same, they're, they're pretty much what they look like. Uh, if you're familiar with my Game Boy Color version, they're just spacers to help ensure that you have your screen centered in your console so that you don't have to keep messing around with it and you know take it apart, put it together, take it apart, put it together half a dozen times. Those will just go in like that. You might need to file them down just a hair, especially if you get them from Osh Park. I'm just going to peel this off now. I'm fully aware that I'm going to get my fingerprints all over it, but that's okay. Yeah, so in this case, I need to file it down a little bit, or at least make this a little bit shorter, because there's a little notch inside the shell that's that's uh, pushing this out a little bit too far. It's kind of what I expected, but it is what it is. So I'm just going to file a notch, and... Uh, We'll install it that way. So if you order these things from Osh Park, they'll probably come like that. And you got to snap it off and file off the little sharp bits. But otherwise, it's easy enough. The actual PCB files that I will upload aren't going to have... They're not going to look like these ones. I just wanted to test out a circuit for something and, you know, two birds, one stone. And I have extra PCBs, so it's okay. Okay, and now it fits perfectly, so that is excellent. So this foam thingy, I believe, is supposed to go right here. You can install it behind the screen. Do note that the screen is already insulated with some tape on it. Uh, don't peel that off because it's insulation. This is adhesive foam. Put it there and it's supposed to space everything out. I haven't used these before and I've heard from a few people saying that it makes the install just a little bit too tight. I'm gonna... you know what? No, we'll leave it in there. I'm not gonna stick it down though. Not yet. I'm sorry, I'm very indecisive. And then from here, we would go ahead and plug in the screen, but the, there's a couple things I want to go over real quick. So this version of the kit has three different options for uh, brightness control. The easiest option and the default one is this uh, flat flex cable that you can use. It's already plugged in. You can bend this up. You can even cut it if you want. It's no big deal. Uh, but if you don't want to use the flat flex cable on the power switch, you can solder on your own wire. Basically this. My kit actually shipped with one. It's just copper tape soldered to any standard wire. You solder that on there, stick it on the shell wherever the heck you want. Bob Gianti. Uh, you could also use these two buttons, or these two solder points, solder them up to uh, button pads on your Game Boy. And... So like, for instance, if you solder up this one that's labeled hold to select and this one that's labeled plus minus to 
I don't know, up. If you hold select and then tap up, it's going to cycle through your brightness levels. Uh, for now, I'm going to go ahead and use the default one, but I'm going to do more stuff with this later. As far as install, just got to flip that up. Be very careful. These things are extraordinarily delicate. Uh, if you saw my last video where I went through a whole batch of them, which I bought this way before I got this batch, but that's besides the point. Uh, anyway, very careful. Be delicate. If it, if, it, if it doesn't feel right, stop and pay attention. So this folds up like that. The gold contacts on this connector go down. Should slide in. And then you can latch it down. Fold that over and this sits in. This is probably why you want to stick that down. Otherwise that'll keep moving around. This PCB itself should sit in the gap between the screen and the PCB, the Game Boy PCB. So this will go in there. But yeah, see, I don't, I don't like how, how that ends up. I'm going to remove that. I think that foam is a little bit too thick. Because this will fit behind there nicely and it's already insulated, so you don't have to worry about that. And once everything's all together anyway, it shouldn't go anywhere. Okay. I'm just going to put in the one screw for now. And this you can tuck into this little crook behind the power switch. And this you just got to fold up and pop in here. And we're very nearly done. Last step. I'm going to go ahead, you have to solder on a uh, power wire, and this kit does ship with some, but you can use whatever the heck you want. I'm going to go ahead and pre-tin the contacts here. And the instructions I've seen say to use this leftmost pin, focus, say to use this pin right here on the power switch, but actually I'm going to use the one, the next one in, uh, so the middle left one. I find that that works a little bit better. And as always when soldering, it's going to make your life much easier to pre-tin. That way you can just put the wire there, touch the soldering iron to it, make sure it's in the right spot, and then you're done. Boom. So that's that. There is two contacts here. You don't have to do the other one. This is this is just a ground contact. And so long as you got everything plugged in properly. You can see that's already connected. So I mean I suppose if you really want to. No reason you can't, just no reason you have to either. So let's try this out, huh? Hey, look, I accidentally just played one of my YouTube videos. I swear I don't watch myself, that's weird. I was just looking to see what game I used last time. All right, what'd I do with Tetris? It's right here. OK. 
Okay. So I'm just going to kill these lights so we have a little bit better view. And on the main menu, I don't think this is the default brightness because I accidentally hit the uh, brightness adjuster, but it shouldn't matter too much. We'll test it on low. And you see the power usage really isn't that much more. This thing's at 110. It was at like 100 when I tested this before. And on high, about 128. Yeah. I'm, ha I'm super happy with that. Uh, and cool thing about this kit, allegedly, we'll try out. Supposedly, it will remember your brightness setting. So I just set the brightness to off. Switch it off with an insulated tool so I don't hit the sensor again. If I switch it back on, it might come on for a second. Ah, uh, now my kit's not that kit. Shame. Thought it was because it had the uh, EEPROM. Oh well, some of the kits do. This one clearly isn't that kit. But anyway, from here, you're done. Just got to put it back together, pop your lens on, and that's it. Uh, I'm going to do a couple more mods to this. So I guess stick around and we'll test out Pokemon Silver once I got everything back together. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and take a quick break, let the camera cool down, um, clean up some of the things that I neglected to clean up the first time, and, uh, you know, just, it, it it's kind of dirty. That's all. But I'll see you in just a second. All right, so I went ahead and desoldered that wire and got the motherboard out of here because I just wanted to clean up a few things, namely these really gross pads and the buttons. Start and select were particularly bad, but... That's besides the point. Anyway, so I do actually want to install a touch sensor brightness that's not at the power switch, but I don't want to use this one. I can, but hang on. You'll, you'll see what I'm getting at in just a second here. This is a mod I did on one of the Game Boy Colors, maybe? No, I, I did it on a Game Boy Color. I just didn't do it in a video. Um, but I need a long piece of copper tape. And I just keep it in this bag so it doesn't come unrolled and get everywhere. Alright. And so I'm actually going to try, instead of putting this on the Nintendo logo here, I want to try and put it on the Game Boy logo. Well, not necessarily in the Game Boy logo because that's offset. I want to put it, uh, I don't know, right in the middle, under the oop, under the glass. Unfortunately, this is a little bit too wide, as it were. I could slip it under there, but I don't want it contacting the screen because it might lead to uh, might not work right if I do that. So I need to make this even thinner. I like having the touch touch sensor behind the logos and shit, but I don't know what the hell my cat's doing. If you hear that noise in the background, I'm sorry. Okay. And we need some wire. Use red wire because it should be invisible anyway. Or not invisible, but hidden. But I have no idea how long it needs to be, so I'm not going to cut it just yet. I'm just going to strip the end off. Ooh, that probably wasn't good. I just hit my light with the end of my soldering iron. The hot end. Okay. So this, I'm going to put it so the wire is on this side. I, mean, I suppose it would probably be just as easy to route it on the other side, but 
It's not what I'm going for. Peel that off. I'm going to get some tweezers. And it would be significantly easier to apply this if I removed the screen first. But. Oh well. Okay. And of course, as I say that, I accidentally bumped the thing out of place anyway. Just using a plastic spudger to make sure it's nice and flat. And now my cat's gone through my tool drawer. I gotta close that. Okay. And this is just going to go right up here. Try and cut a little bit of slack, just to make it easier to assemble, but not too much slack. And then this, just going to get soldered to that touch point right there. Which I should have pretend, but I didn't. So now I got a really crusty joint. Nice. There was too much slack on that wire, but I'm not too concerned. They should all tuck in pretty nicely. Put the buttons back in. Oh, before I button this up, there is one more mod you can do. If you short out these two contacts right here, uh, J4, it will increase the brightness of the screen, the, the brightness levels. It will, of course, cost more power usage, but more brightness for more power, that's a trade-off you can determine on your own. It's not much, both brightness and power but it is an option. Okay. It's all nice and in place. I'm gonna pop another screw, or at least one screw in here. get this reassembled. This sensor will go in here. I'll, I'll just leave it because, I mean, it doesn't really hurt anything by being here. I think they actually recommend you fold it. But I'm just going to shove it in there and see what happens.
Oh, there we go. I ended up folding it anyway, just because of the tool I'm using. That's okay. So it is sticking out a little bit, the board, but it should press flat once everything is together. But I'm not going to do that yet because it's so much easier to test with the uh, leads hanging out. Because I didn't test Pokemon Silver. So I messed up the placement of that. I need to fix that. I don't like that at all. It does work though. So in game, let's pull in 135 to 100, like 133 to 139. There's variance with this hardware and it'll jump up and down. Etc. So we'll call that like what 136. Drop that down to brightness off. 118, 117, 120. Not much at all. But the thing I really wanted to see is whether this drops any frames like the other versions of the kit. And quite frankly, I don't see it. So like the Game Boy Color version, the pirate one with the FPGA seems to fix all that frame dropping nonsense, which I'm completely happy with. I dig it. All right, enough of that. I'll, I'll do a side by side in just a second here. Let's go ahead and get this thing together. I know I said I need to fix that, but Fuck it. I'll do it later. I'm sure I gotta take this thing apart for some god awful reason soon. Right. So before I pop this rear on, I'm going to remove this rusted, if I can, Stuck in here. So I gotta find the right tool that we're I'm gonna mark up the shell if I use that. That is a terrible idea. How about a small flathead screwdriver? This thing is not coming out. There we go. So yeah, that's just a little bit gross. It is what it is. Let's get some IPA on cotton swab. And again, I probably should do a better job than this, but if it works. It's still stupid and you're lucky. Problem is you can't really get in there. I'm gonna 
pause the video for a few minutes and try and clean this up a little bit better. That's worse than I thought it was. I'll be back. All right, so I went ahead and uh, got this cleaned up just about as good as it's going to get. I had to end up picking off the big chunks with my tweezers here, and then I just used my uh, water pick to get everything out. It seemed to work, but of course, once I got water involved, I had to wait for this thing to dry. So while I was waiting for that, I ended up re redoing this wire. Just All I did was make it shorter, because this is a clear shell, so you're going to see it. and I think it looks better that way. Um, I also did go ahead and move the sensor, just moved it up a little bit so that once the lens is on, you shouldn't be able to see it. Uh, but otherwise, I think we're good to go. So because I'm replacing that thing, I've got a donor pink shell here that I'm never going to fix this Game Boy. I've been using it for parts for way too long, but it's got a perfectly good battery thingy. Technical term, by the way. Okay. So as far as removing these things, there's just a little tab here that you have to bend up and there's a spot where you can stick a flathead screwdriver right in there. You just gotta bend the tab so that it comes out and then to insert it, just bend the tab back the way it was and then I'll click in this spot. There we go. I can never even tell it was broken. Oop, forgot an important part. So yeah, that foam piece, I mean, it's nice looking out, but I think it's a little bit too thick. Some people had mentioned to me that they were, their consoles didn't really go together properly. I wonder if they used that foam piece. And maybe there's a better way to use it, I don't know. I haven't been putting it in any of my consoles. They've been fine so far. Granted, I don't use my Game Boys like crazy, so if there was an issue, I probably wouldn't notice it. But just bouncing around the apartment, there hasn't been an issue. All right. That is all together. I'm going to pop this lens on now. This part would come off too. So I always end up smudging the glass. Oh, but it doesn't matter because there's miles of bezel. All right. Goes in there. And beautiful. One last thing. Till I get the uh, proper one at least. Right, so I am going to actually put Pokemon Silver in the high vision kit that I did not too long ago. Boot this up and we will try out my uh, 
EverDrive. In this one, let's make sure it boots up. That's probably not good. Oh, there it goes. Could also be my batteries. It's always an option. But it's not, I don't have a low power warning light, so I think we're good. One thing I messed up, uh, I think the LCD actually needs to go down towards the bottom, not towards the top. I mean, it's not too big a deal. But if you want it centered, that might work a little bit better. zoom in here. So side by side, um, this one on the left here is of course the high vision kit. They, they look the same on the title screen to me. I don't see any difference. And they're both actually set to within 10 minutes, so we don't have to, oh well, it's the Game Boy Pocket version. I don't think the lighting changes anyway. But this one actually looks slightly lighter. Like, not brighter, just less dark. I don't know. Not communicating what, I, what I'm thinking. Like, the blacks aren't as black. But anyway, this is the thing I wanted to show you. So the left one is the high vision kit that the Cloud Game Store on AliExpress sells. And they're very adamant, I'm going to turn this down, I'm sorry. They're very adamant that this new version here is a pirate, you know, it's absolutely worthless, blah, 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 blah. And yet, compare the two side by side and notice how this one is frame skipping. Yeah, pirate or not, when you fix the actual features of the kit, I mean, it's pretty hard to sell, you know? Another thing they mention, bring that up again. They mention the power savings. But let's go ahead and look at me throwing my phone around. My spreadsheet here. So I did go ahead and fill in this newest video. Uh, I didn't fill in the Pokemon Silver values yet because I forgot to do that while uh, I was taking a break. But I did fill in the values. So we see before it was pulling about 97, after about 128, which is a difference of 31 milliamps. So if we extrapolate on a linear curve, which I seriously doubt the power usage in the Game Boy Pocket is linear, but I mean, if, if we're comparing all other things being equal, it should be a good for estimation. So I see that the projected battery life is about 75% of stock, which means if you're getting six hours out of a pair of AAAs, you probably get like four and a half. That's with this new kit here. If we look at my spreadsheet and go back to this one, which is this console, I tested, is that the... That's the right one. Okay. So before it was pulling about 96 and after it's pulling 54 or 150, which is difference of 54 and 64% of projected battery life. Now I'm not, I'm no mathematician, but something don't add up. All right. If you say your low power kit uses less power than the competition, Maybe you should actually measure because what I'm getting is completely different. Now, to be fair, these are two different revisions of Game Boy Pocket PCB. Um, the one I installed, this, this Game Boy Pocket is a revision 02. 
whereas the one I just did in this video is a revision 01. So maybe that's making a difference? Maybe not. Um, let me know what your th thoughts are. I'm not looking at the total values, right? I'm not looking at the before and after. I'm just looking at the difference between the before and after. So the difference between the before and after is 31 versus 54. All right. That's the difference of 20 milliamp hours. That's the difference between, well, I guess when you're only getting six hours on a stock Game Boy, that's only like half an hour, but it's still, it's still time you could be playing Pokemon, you know, scoring them high Tetris scores. So I, I don't know, whatever. I'm just pulling shit out of my ass at this point. Anyway, I think this turned out pretty cool. I'm really happy with it. And my touch sensor under the the uh, lens does seem to work, so I'm happy with that too. Um, the touch sensor and the power switch doesn't seem to... I don't think I have that in the right spot. I can't get that one working. This one has two touch sensors, and that works just fine. So I messed something up on this one, but I got this one right. I don't know. Either way, I mean, it even works on an EverDrive. I can't imagine that I get stellar battery life with it, but whatever. Oh, you know what? Before we get out of here, let's test one more thing. I forgot I grabbed this. I went ahead and grabbed my Tetris DX cart because I wanted to see how the um, some of the other IPS kits handle this a little bit weird. So on the Game Boy Color version, this last row of pixels does, or excuse me, on the Game Boy Color version of the IPS kit, not on the Game Boy Color version of this kit, completely different kit. Um, the last row of pixels is a little bit noisy on the title screen here. Well, in the whole game, really, but most noticeable on the title screen. Um, of course, this isn't running in Game Boy Color double speed mode because this isn't Game Boy Color. It can't. So it's probably not going to affect it. But the Game Boy Color version also has some pretty serious ghosting, which I don't notice here. So that being said, I think this... This is a really nice kit. I'm really happy with this. One thing I'm looking at in particular for ghosting is these fence posts tend to leave a trail as the screen changes real quick like that. I'm not seeing it in person. I'll have to review the footage, take a closer look, but looks good to me. Another thing is this chain kind of flickering like that. Um, by the way, it looks I'm looking at the viewfinder now. It looks completely different on camera than it does in person. It looks just kind of translucent, whereas on the camera I'm seeing like every other dot sometimes. I don't know. Uh, but when the screen transitions, you see it flash in place, in place, in place until the screen finally clears to the next realm. So while it's sliding, you can see the chain just stick in place on the IPS kits. I don't see that in here either. So that being said, I mean, I got to play with this some more, obviously. I've only had the Game Boy Pocket assembled for all of 10 minutes, if that. Uh, but yeah, I'll play with it. But I'm pretty happy with that so far. I think this thing is pretty cool. Um, otherwise, I think I'm done with this video. If you guys have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Um, Anything you want me to test out in particular, if you've heard there's any bugs or something, I'll debug it, see what we can do. And uh, yeah, until next time, thanks for watching. I'm not a complete monster, I just didn't want the video to get too long. I did move the screen down to the proper position. So yeah, line it up at the bottom, not the top. I also... Move this sensor. Shit, it was working. I swear, it, it, it was working until I hit the record button. Whatever, this one still works. It's the one I care about.
I swear it worked. <laughs>